Washi is a Japanese word that means Japanese paper. But we use the term heritage washi to describe those papers that are made today in the same way basically as they were 1400 years ago when Buddhist monks brought the technique of making this revolutionary material to Japan to use for brush writing their calligraphy prayers. And it's heritage washi that the Washi sisters have used in this magnificent exhibition. And you will hear them talk about it in this video a little later on. The fibers used to make heritage washi come from three bushes, Kozo, Mitsumata, and Gampi. Three renewable bushes that have been used for centuries once they're refined to make very beautiful paper. But to create these special papers that are strong yet thin and full of potential, it takes an incredible amount of work. And so many pairs of hands and many long days of hard work go into making it. Here's a quick list of what, how they do it. Cut the branches, bundle them, steam them, strip the barks, scrape the inner layer clean, cook it, finish, rinse it, remove the dross that's gotten left behind, add hibiscus root, stir it and stir it and stir it. Dip in your bamboo screen to layer the wet pulp several times to make even a, shin, a, sh a thin sheet. Lay the wet sheet on a, a stack of wet sheets and press it to you get rid of the excess water and dry, dry it on wooden boards. It's a tremendous investment of time and talent passed through the generations, resulting in an art material bursting with possibilities as the Washi sisters have explored and discovered on their journey. In the mid 19th century, there were approximately 80,000 families making these quality papers in Japan. Today, although many people make paper of very mediocre taste, today there are fewer than 25 families making heritage washi. that I use is tearing washi. This is a final product of tearing. There are several layers and you can see the fibers and how it rips and takes on a personality of its own. The first thing you do is you pick the paper that you want. Sometimes they're very intricate and sometimes very simple. And I just do different sizes as I go, and then layer them for effect. When you're tearing washi, 
or when you're cutting it down to size, the size that you want. I never use a scissors. I always use water. All of the washi paper, the sides are different. One is very smooth, the other is very textured. And depending on how much fiber you want, you will get a different sense from each side. So I've just made a border here and let the water sink in. And then with my fingers, just gently, gently tear it. And you can begin to see the fibers let go. You can tell that even though it looks so fragile, it's a very strong, very, very strong paper. And again, the fibers are speaking out and reaching out. And look how lovely that is. You never, ever, ever throw out a piece of wash. You just you don't know when this little paper can find a place. When you're doing this, it's almost like a Zen meditation feeling. You're one with the paper. You can really appreciate the washing. There are no limits to what you can do with this. And you can see the white filaments overlapping the other. You can sew on it. You can write on it. You can tear it some more. You can add a strengtheners like Kanyaku to make it stiff. But that's the form I often start with, the tearing. In many ways, it's showing a whole other element of what it can do. And it rises to the occasion. Heritage washi is wonderful. dressmaking model that I have used to make several dresses uh, out of washi. My first step is to cover the whole space with saran wrap. I'm starting a new dress. This is again the model covered with plastic and now I'm trying to build up 
with metal netting a form that will help me create a different shape for the dress. So this is all one sheet of akebono which was folded over and the, the sheet was going to be on the other side where she dictates more than we plan and so the change I, I've decided to change it so that the outside shows with this lovely edge and this white edge has changed all my plans and I figured out how to use the white edge here for the top so that it, it becomes an asset not a liability. So this is the back and the form needs more than just one sheet. So I've used the second sheet, but it is not the identical dye and color, whatever, than the first sheet. So as a result, we're going to have a, an insert here that's different. And um, I'm going to see how to manage that difference. So this is made out of a washi named Akebono, which means John, I believe. And it's got magnificent threads in the paper. You can do anything with this. It is amazing. I love the way one can scrunch it up. This is the lining inside the dress to here. And this is the akebono, which is sturdy. This is a, an Unrio Koso white, which is lined with just a plain white Koso. After I made the white dress and sort of shaped it, I decided that it needed something else. And so I turned to Mother Nature and I used paper, which is what the wasp's nest is made out of. And I feel that nature's paper has complemented heritage washi paper. This dress has two layers to it. This is a very, very thin gampy. And this is a much thicker paper. I don't know what washi this is, but it's a very thick one, which has become crinkled from the process of putting wheat paste on it. I made a belt and a button. This is a plain kozo, very plain, thin kozo. I have done a rubbing mark of a bee, beehive and I've done that rubbing with charcoal and then I have taken the paper and worked on it on the hot box. This is my hot box and everybody's curious about what a hot box is. It's anodized aluminum and inside there are light bulbs and they give a uniform heat which I measure over here. And this is my palette. And these are my paints. So I work with them on the hot box. It gives me a huge option of what I can do. And then when I'm satisfied with the image that I have there, I put a piece of paper on. It's all quite a quick process. And I lift it up and that's my first print. I will adjust it in any way I see fit. It's a process of layering like that that uh, leads to my final product.
Hi, my name's Sharon Corrigan Forrest, and this afternoon I'm going to be demonstrating one of the many, many special uh, properties of, when, of working with Washi. And uh, what I've done is um, I have selected one in particular, and that is the property of uh, absorbency that uh, several examples that I've already stretched uh, will show you in terms of what it's capable of doing when I work with a particular medium and today I've made a selection of working with water-based inks. And I'm also going to be working with Tombow water-based pens. This is the Shikishi uh, it's the Oguni Shikishi, and on, on this one, just this one alone, what I've done is I've made marks, and then I'll just go over this. You can see it's already working and bleeding with the other colors. And so I put the pigment on first, and then what I'm going to do is add more water. And I'm just, I can drip it, I can, brush it on. For this one, I selected a heritage picture. I did not work with the markers on this one. Instead, I worked with my palette of inks that I've sort of let it all sort of, it, it, it's, it's the colors that I'm working with, but I didn't want them in separate. I want them to be able to mix and move them back and forth. So I'm gonna go back in, into this one here, and I'm going to just create a different pattern all together. So I will make marks. I'm just gonna let it form its own patterns. And this paper is Unryu. And Unryu provides me with uh, its own patterns when it comes to the fibers. Put the water down first. And then I'm going to use a combination. So what I'll do is I'm sort of working with the same palette. And you can see how quickly I'm working, but it's already forming its own patterns. From this, I would leave it let it dry a little, and then I could go back and actually work with the markers right into it. But this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for it to play with the fibers that are in uh, the, the actual washi. So this is a, a way of showing you the different qualities of the absorbency that, that certain washi papers have that I use today. And I love them because you can already see that this in itself is telling its own story and it's taken over the actual process of making its own artwork. And before I conclude my demonstration, I just want to thank the Japanese Paper Place for the extraordinary resources and materials and knowledgeable advice that they've provided to the community for many years. Hope you enjoyed the demonstration.